Welcome to the College Investor Audio Show, where we talk about the biggest issues impacting millennial money, from student loan debt to side hustles to building wealth. We will show you how to get out of debt so that you can build real wealth for the future. Welcome to the show today, and I know it's kind of a topic that is a little eh, not fun to talk about, but you know, we have to. Such an important topic today on the College Investor Audio Show. What's the right life insurance coverage amount and term length? Let's get right to it. Yeah, I know it can be unsettling to consider an untimely demise, but if you have dependents, taking the time to protect them against the unlikely possibility could make all the difference in the world. That's when life insurance enters the picture. Term life insurance can be a smart move for your family's financial future. Ultimately, these choices will be impacted by your unique financial situation, of course. So, in partnership with our friends at Bestow, let's explore what your life insurance policy should look like to protect the ones you love most. Bestow is an online life insurance agency, by the way, and they can quickly get a term life insurance policy with no medical exam. It just takes a few minutes to get a quote. You can actually do that right now if you wanted to at thecollegeinvestor.com. So, first of all, let's ask the question, What's the right term length? So in choosing a term life insurance policy, one of the most crucial details is deciding appropriate term length. As with all personal finance decisions, the right term length will come down to the unique characteristics of your finances and life goals. So here are a few considerations to keep in mind when choosing a term length. First of all, your dependents. In general, the reason you take out a life insurance policy is to protect your dependents from financial distress in the event of your early death. With that, a primary consideration for term length should be the amount of time to expect to have your dependents rely on you. <laughs> so, for example, a parent with young children may decide on a longer term length than a parent with children in high school. Take some time to think about how long your dependents will need your financial support. In some cases, the timeline may be shorter than others, but it makes sense to err on the side of caution by choosing a term that will provide financial support to those you leave behind. Also, take a look at your obligations. The financial obligations you have on the books should be considered when choosing a term. One of the most common big-ticket obligations, of course, is your remaining mortgage balance. But any debts that your family will have to finish after your loss should impact your life insurance decision. For example, let's say that you have 20 years remaining on your mortgage. If your dependents could not easily cover the remaining balance, it makes sense to get a life insurance term of at least 20 years. Otherwise, your dependents could be in a tough financial spot without you. Now let's take a look at what's the right amount of life insurance coverage. Although the exact right amount of life insurance coverage will vary, of course, depending on your unique situation, there are some general considerations to narrow down your number. Multiply your income by 10. This is just an easy way to do it. In general, experts do recommend buying enough life insurance to replace your salary for 10 years. So for example, let's say that you're, you know, your family's primary breadwinner and you earn 100 grand per year. You should buy at least a million bucks worth of coverage with this rule of thumb. But this number is just a starting point. If your family is without your income, that will significantly impact their financial future. But thinking all through the possibilities can really help ensure their financial needs are met even without you there to provide for them. Additionally, you'll want to add in more coverage to cover major costs that your family would face without you. A few of these important expenses include some final expenses. This is so easily overlooked, the cost of any final expenses associated with your passing. Unfortunately, the funeral and burial expenses can add up quickly, and with that, you'll want to add enough coverage to provide for these unavoidable costs. Some outstanding debts. If you have a mortgage balance or any shared debts, you should add those outstanding debts into your final coverage amount. So in keeping with the example from before, let's say that this breadwinner has a remaining mortgage balance of $100,000. With that, they should consider increasing their coverage amount to $1,100,000. Also, big planned expenses. You likely had some big ticket expenses on the horizon. A major expense could be the college tuition you intend to provide for your kids. Run the numbers on how much you want to contribute to your child's education. You should consider tacking that amount onto your coverage amount 
with kind of a rough estimate in mind. You're going to want your child's education to continue as planned, with or without you in the picture. But that might not be feasible for your family without the safety net that life insurance can provide. So the bottom line, real quick, striking the right balance is going to be key for you. When shopping around for life insurance, term policies are usually the right option, but you'll still need to nail down the right term length and policy amount. Hopefully, this gave you some ideas on how to do that. And then once you have an idea of what you need, finalizing your life insurance needs can be easy with Bestow. The online term life insurance company offers low-cost options with just a few minutes of your time. Plus, there's no obligation to move forward. Just get a quote and see if it makes sense. And here's a quick hint. It usually does. You can check out Bestow. Again, we have a link at thecollegeinvestor.com. And if you want to explore Bestow further, we have a full review so that you can decide if this company in particular is the right fit for you. You can find that as well, of course, at thecollegeinvestor.com. You can find all kinds of different things there, by the way. Tips on how to start a side hustle. <laughs> for anywhere from life insurance to taxes to side hustles. It's all there. So much going on at thecollegeinvestor.com. Thanks again for stopping by today, and we'll talk to you again real soon.